Go. Hey, good morning everyone. What's up? Welcome back to this new journey. Joe, a journey yeah. of an entrepreneur. Uh, and I'm super happy to have my friend Eric Schneider, the CEO and co-founder of Pego. Everything, Pego is. everything is pronounced good? Yeah, perfect. Uh, perfect. Good to see you. How are you doing? Good, 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 Sophia. It's uh, great to be on this uh, journey and uh, Happy to share some thoughts. Oh, with you. nice! So again, the, the the concept of a journey of an entrepreneur is spending a couple of minutes with the with the great entrepreneurs in this beautiful city, beautiful water, weather, beautiful yeah. city of Toronto, and yeah, um, and knowing about why what the entrepreneur is doing, the advice that you can give, obviously for the next generation of people yeah. are thinking to run a business, etc., etc., etc. So let's start with the first question. Eric, so what's your background? Who are you? Well, if you can present yourself briefly yeah, and then yeah. we're going to move about the question why you decide to become sure, an entrepreneur. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, well, you can see, or at least you can hear uh, from the accent that I come from another land. <laughs> Which Charlie. one? I'm from South Africa originally, oh, and, wow. uh, but I've been in Toronto for 30 years. Okay. Uh, so, you know, very much embedded in the community here mm -hmm. and actually have a quite an eclectic background. Uh, I started life as an accountant, a chartered accountant, yeah. uh, but at some point in time transitioned into the world of marketing. Uh, in that space, I built out an agency, which I scaled from really uh, a standing start of myself, one person, as, a, as the sales guy, yeah. uh, to a business of about 170 people. Wow, um, that's yeah. amazing. And, but, but I have to say that the entrepreneurial spirit preceded that. Um, I you know, had experiences even as an accountant working on a job that I would regard as being entrepreneurial minded yeah. as against, uh, I think it's, it's more of a, a mindset mm -hmm. than, I, than necessarily the environment you're in. So, yeah. question, why did you decide to become an entrepreneur? I don't think I ever decided. I think, as I say, it was a mindset. So, you know, I think entrepreneurs okay. have this tendency to always look at things with a fresh view. In other words, I, I mean, I'll harken back to even uh, my days as an accountant. You present it with a task and you look at it and you reflect on what's been done before and you can choose to just do what has been done before. Yeah. Or, you know, for some people, your mind goes into this area of, you know what, I think this should be done differently. Mm. And there's a better way, a faster way, a, a quicker way. And, and to me, that's entrepreneurialism. Um, and that's, uh, you know, I feel that that's something that I always, it's been part and part of, parcel of my nature and the things that I approach. So even as a, you know, as an articling clock, um, you know, those types of, that, that kind of attitude yeah, yeah, yeah. got got me into areas of trying to innovate, uh, and, and you know, obviously, you could look and say there's not not a whole lot of room for innovation in those areas. But yeah. I think I think thinking of a fresh slate, uh, you know, is, fresh yeah, slate. yeah is, like is, is a key attitude at least. The rest is you know, in, in life, there's there's uh, serendipity. Um, yeah. I happened to stumble across a business in the UK that uh, was a category leader in, in, in a space that I identified with. I felt it was relevant to the business I was working for at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided to approach my boss to suggest that we should be in this business. Uh -huh. uh, again, you know, that's kind of yeah. thinking of a clean slate just because we're doing one thing doesn't mean we should not think about yes. these other possibilities and I was literally given the green light to go and investigate and uh, in, in, in that effort uh, in, in a very kind of cutting a, a very long story uh, to soundbite uh, I approached this business negotiated a deal to set up a joint venture for the uh, Canadian uh, landscape uh, within short order, won our first piece of business, which was an American institution, oh, JCPenney, really? a very significant deal. Oh, yes. <laughs> and, wow. and, you know, from that point Amen. in time, you know, again, just because we started off with things structured in a certain way, the entrepreneurial mind took me into another zone, which is just one JCPenney, why is this deal not actually for North America? Mm. So, you know, there's this constant yeah, yeah, iteration, yeah, yeah. and but but ultimately, 
that led me into the zone where um, you know I really kind of felt that my personal energy of uh, you know focus on uh, a business with a clear vision and a sense of purpose and building a culture that uh, attracted Got it. great people wow. uh, was, was kind of the zone that I just was thriving in and truth be told you know it's the great people that built the business not me uh, I just you know beat, you. Beat, beat the drum yeah. you led the charge established the vision um, take the risk took the risk uh, yeah and, and risk is you know uh, I have to say that people should should appreciate risk in so many different facets just by being kind of ballsy mm. to take another approach in my view is a risk yeah you choose to take on something that and do it in a different way uh, and risk your boss um, criticizing you or challenging you mm. for not doing what was done before you yeah. know that is yeah. entrepreneurial risk mm. uh, you know in in this in this instance you know there are obviously different levels of risk whether you're speculating yeah. on the success of something and applying your time for free mm. or you're writing checks literally writing checks to invest in in the business uh, risk is very much part of it yeah. wow. so let's let's talk about pay yeah so tell me tell me a little bit about this this uh, great journey I, I love what yeah. you're doing by the way I'm not spoiling again but yeah. uh, what are you doing what are your services exactly and why your customers should absolutely use it right. because they should absolutely use it so yeah. you know paygo basically why is, is a payment system that supports the ability to pay your transactions in installments over a very short cycle okay fairly coincidental with the typical pay cycle mm -hmm. so you transact in 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 fairly kind of common areas that you would typically not finance let's say uh, purchasing clothing online yeah um, you have an ability to pay you pay 25% of the transaction is paid immediately but the remaining um, transaction fees is, is basically paid over another three installments so six week timeline so you know it kind of it is uh, debt financing in, in a fashion but really the way to think about it this is really you know through the psychological lens which is I really love that thing I want it um, I don't have the cash now but yeah. I actually have confidence in the fact that I will have the cash in two weeks time and I don't want debt yes. so it's more of a budget planning tool where I can make a decision with respect to that purchase in the confidence of knowing I'm going to have the cash mm. and that's that's an important mm. thing for millennials as yes. I said they want it now uh, so under normal circumstances if you can't get those if you can't reconcile those two things uh, I want it now but I don't want to be settled with debt um, I'm not going to do it oh. so from a merchant's perspective the psychology and uh, of, of being able to align uh, the payments against the known cash flow yeah leaving um, you know the, the customer feeling quite confident around the ability to pay mm. uh, really allows it, it opens up purchasing power and um, they will purchase things that they would not otherwise have and if, if not um, just that one transaction you know if, let, let, let's assume you know there were you know the, the transaction value is a hundred dollars yes and uh, they were going to pay um, they look at it in, and an installment is $25 if, if actually um, there's something that if they, if they got sufficient enough cash to spring for let's say $50 they might look at something that is $200 not $100 so from yeah. a yeah, yeah, from yeah. a increasing basket size perspective as well there's great upside that's that's great because you you allow the people to buy it but against getting a loan and getting stuck with the loans debt etc yeah I mean I, I think that traditional credit cards become a sinkhole where you know you just keep adding transactions and you just think of it as one broad bucket of debt yes. and, and it gets out of hand Paygo is really designed to help people are thinking transaction in the narrowness of one single purchase I want to buy wow, that amazing. pair of pants I know that I'm gonna have I've got 
enough to pay the first installment right now today, whether it's, it could be on my debit card. Mm -hmm. and, and I might, you know, millennials uh, have a propensity to to kind of skew debit card as against credit. Yes. So you know, I would I would look at it, um, you know, through the lens of I'm um, getting paid. In two weeks time so i'm gonna have the cash yes yes i'm not gonna be in absolutely debt, i'm not say. gonna pay so like 25 percent of something or the interest or no yeah i'm not gonna it's not gonna roll and in yeah. a month's time i take a look at my bill and it's yeah. um so it's, it's, a, it's it's a great also great um, solution and um, answer to the merchant yeah well for merchant and and this is not a new concept just to know that it's a it's a very old concept in terms of uh lay bars yeah. many many years ago um, the distinction with the lay bar is you would you would pay in installments and get the product at the end obviously in this instance uh, you get it right now but from a merchant's perspective um, you know the the there are the concept has has evolved in other markets and their the observations are 20 to 30 percent sales uplift <laughs> and the key driver there um, is that it is it is opening up purchasing power that didn't exist. It's an incremental decision. It's not yeah. displacing, uh, you know, another payment system. It's uh, I have enough cash to deal with part of the transaction now, and I absolutely know that I'll have the cash to deal with the remaining installments based on known cycles. And on that basis, I'm prepared to commit uh, for something that I would not have committed otherwise. That's the incremental nature yeah, 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 of what yeah. you're doing. That's that's fantastic. So, hey, I like, but I like the way you you do. It. It's, it's super simple. So, it's very very straightforward and simple. It's a, you know, it's fr from a, a model perspective, we we are staying very very focused right now mm. in the narrowness of uh, you know six week uh, installments. Uh, sorry, four four installments over really a two week cycle. So is it is it for the Canadian market, US, uh, you know, or limited yeah. for a specific geography? Yeah, both. So, so right now, you know we we are um, focused on the Canadian market exclusively right now, yeah. uh, and that restriction is is just driven by the nature of the acquiring bank relationships that we've established. Uh, they are Canadian banks that, that are supporting us. Uh, but as we progress, uh, we have, you know, no doubt that uh, we will be uh, competing in the U.S. market. Uh, I think there is a ph phenomenal opportunity to really incubate here, though, and to go into the U.S. market in a lot more confident position. That's that's great. So, is, is it a question? If if obviously if you have that that need, let's say you are looking for something, someone you want to connect with uh, yeah. anybody, uh, what could be that, that kind of need? Yeah, you know, I would say, Sophie, and right now uh, we are laser focused on building our merchant relationships. Okay, and so uh, you know, we aside from direct merchant relation merchant relationships, uh, people that can participate in. Uh, the pay go offer uh, and, and and potentially even in time to come you know might be interested in being you know investors in the rounds that we will pursue uh, you know the opportunity to get in early is always a great opportunity okay uh, and people who have I would say relationships with broad merchants mm -hmm. that can that can uh, help uh, us progress in the early stages of the merchant adoption piece okay so how, how can people find you? Yeah, we, well the best route I would say is our website which is uh, www.pago.com Okay, can we share share this? You can share it. Fantastic. Uh, you, the, you'll see that Pago has an interesting connotation. It's, um, you know, it's a riff of uh, obviously Pay and Pago is, 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 a, is a Spanish and Portuguese word for payment. I, I think it, it oh, gives nice. us, gives you a bit of a sense of our global like ambition. Name. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's quite a funky name. Oh, and it oh. talks to the nature of the business. I was thinking in beginning like pay and go. Like yeah, pay it's, go. A, it's, it's it's simple. That's yeah, simple. it's 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 you know you're totally right. And what we debated is actually the business is go and then pay. So, ah, yeah, I was thinking uh, of go. So, and pay. Yeah. Mm. It, it's so, a good for but, way but, of but, but irrespective, you know, at the, at the end of the day, um, the notion of of um, 
kind of the separation of yeah, the go yeah, yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. and pay and the global notion is is uh, part of our brand. We will share all those information and even social media if you have. So yeah. let me let me ask you a question about entrepreneurship. Yeah. So what are the struggles that you face when you are an entrepreneur that you are maybe facing actually or like never ending those kinds yeah. of struggles, right? And how can you deal with that? Yeah. Yeah, you know, struggles I think are always, are, are that you're always operating in areas of gray. There's no certainty ever. Yeah. It's not black and white. Yeah. And you can see that as an opportunity because it's from our perspective that's when creativity actually comes to the fore. That's when you actually do things differently because you're not quite sure what's going to work out. Mm. There's, there's just a, a degree right. of kind of grit and determination and relentless, uh, you've got to be relent, relentless um, in, in, in kind of your pursuit of, of success and, and actually probably more important, I think it's the way you deal with failure because there's always mm. going to be failure and disappointments um, and it's, it's your ability to just keep perspective uh, on you know what did I learn out of that thing so that I can continue and and still succeed uh, right. with those those lessons in mind because it's hard it is unbelievably hard I think that uh, you know people who are not kind of living that life um, you know don't understand the challenge of the lack of security that exists the emotional challenges right but at the same time there's just gratification in that whatever you're doing is is just so creative yes and you know you have the flexibility of making that decision whether it's the right decision or the wrong decision at the end of the day you know it is your decision and um, you know knowing that you breathe life life into that outcome I think is uh, tremendous Wow I love it so let's say there is an entrepreneur or entrepreneurs, future entrepreneurs, listening to your 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 interview, yeah. and they are thinking about running their business. What kind of advice or advices you can give? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think that you've got to really be kind of, as I say, determined and have a, cl a clear view um, uh, of what you're looking to accomplish. Be prepared to kind of iterate on the fly as you need to because <laughs> life is not not a straight line yes, yes but i think as quickly as you can you have to find great people who can really align with your passions and your culture that you're you kind of creating to this business and give them the latitude as well to help you build the business i think it takes um you know a, a lot of hands on deck to get stuff done yeah and the one thing that you know the entrepreneur brings is the inspiration that's what you know everybody else needs to basically break through boundaries that they might not otherwise have done by themselves got it so you know find yourself uh, you know a great talent pool as best as you can uh, you know, never give up yeah. uh, but also don't be shy to come to a realization that your the track is not exactly it needs to be right now and you know change course wow. if need be so 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 at the end of the day it's a question of people it's a question of people and it's a question of I would say um, you know that kind of attitude around taking risk thinking about things from a clean page not getting caught in experience I actually you know I often say that experience can be a constraint so, you know, if you're constantly in the zone of saying, well, what did everybody else do? Or what did I used to do? Or, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, people have a tendency to go look at benchmarks and use yeah. those as examples of what you need to do. Um, mm. Sometimes the best thought comes when you just put that all aside and you think about your customer. What do they want and what is the need and how to solve for that thing? Um, and, and that fresh thinking can lead you into spaces where you know you create all of your competitive differences other people are not doing it and it starts to stand out as being distinctive wow. and uh, 
obviously creates uh, you know the, the the competitive opportunity at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I love I love the advice. Thank you, thank yeah. you very much. I mean, uh, it was it was fantastic to spend that that minutes with uh, with you. Uh, I really love what you are doing, guys. It's um, it's really a, it's it's a real problem solver. You solve yeah. a real problem, and you, but at the same time, you create opportunities for for your customers to grow and, and grow themselves. So it's it's fantastic. I like the dynamic of of your team. So, guys, if you are in in the in the in their in their what they are looking for as you said previously don't hesitate to come and send a message connect with them and yeah. uh, and it was really great to have you Eric thank you very so much for your time really very really nice. nice and uh, looking forward for the next session guys yeah, yeah. have a good day thanks for watching my video I hope you enjoyed it uh, if you are interested about joining me to speak about your product or services and let the world know about it uh, don't hesitate comment below or send me a message just here uh, again, if you're an entrepreneur, we have a solution for every problem that you may have. We have this virtual incubator, Lausanne Institute. If you are in very, very early stage with a very limited budget, we help you to grow by getting five stars advice from experts who made it without paying a fortune. We have Lausanne Media that helps you to grow and boost your business brand and generate leads. We have Lausanne Connect, connects you with um, business partners, investors, associates, uh, you name it. In short, we have solution for you. We have a lot of solution for you. So I'm looking forward to see you soon. Stay tuned and don't hesitate. If you need our services, send, you, send us a message. Have a good day. Bye.